The goal, as we solve systems of equations with matrices, is reduced row echelon form. That is something of the form 1, 0, reading off the first row, 1, 0, some constant in this example, 2, and in the second row, 0, 1, and then some constant, here the example, it's a negative 7, because each of our rows represent a variable, or each of our columns represent a variable. So this first row represents the equation 1x plus 0y equals 2, or x equals 2. And the second row, 0x plus 1y equals negative 7, or y equals negative 7, tells us our solution is negative, or is 2 comma negative 7 is an ordered pair. Now we're going to solve systems using what is called Gauss-Jordan elimination, which begins with writing the augmented matrix for the system. Second, we use matrix row operations to simplify the matrix to a row equivalent matrix in reduced row echelon form, with ones down the main diagonal from upper left to lower right, and zeros above and below those ones. The process we are going to follow is this. First, get a one in the upper left, the row one, column one position. Then, we will use that one to get a zero below it, that is in row two, column one. Next, we'll get a one in row two, column two, and then we'll use the one to get a zero above it in row one, column two. Applying those, those operations to the entire row will give us something in the form, a form that we can actually determine the solution to. All right, for our example, solve the following system using Gauss-Jordan elimination. My first equation is 3x minus 3y equals 27, and my second equation is 2x plus y equals 3, and I can write this as an augmented matrix, as 3, negative 3, 27 for my first row, and I'll draw my vertical bar bet between the second and third entries, and my second row is 2, 1, vertical bar, 3. Now, following the steps we've said, and I'm going to write this up here, I want to write my, gal my reduced row echelon form, my goal up in the corner. First thing I'm going to do is try to get a 1 in this entry. You may notice that that entry is a 3 in the upper left entry. So what I'm going to do is use the row operation of multiplying by a constant. And I'm going to do 1 third times row 1. So if I calculate this, I'm going to say 1 third times 3, which is 1. 1 third times negative 3, which will be negative 1. And 1 third times 27, which is 9. So that my first row becomes 1, negative 1, 9. Let me go ahead and rewrite that matrix. 1, negative 1, 9. And then the second row stays the same, 2, 1, 3. Next, I want to get a zero in the second row, first column entry, my two. Now, how I'm going to do that is I'm going to multiply row one. This is all one step. Multiply row one by a negative two, and then add that to row two. We'll see why I choose that in a second. I'll say negative 2 times row 1, that's a value of 1, plus row 2, which is 2, and that is a 0. That's what I want. I want a 0 in that spot. So I'm going to apply that same operation. I'm going to say negative 2 times negative 1 plus positive 1. Again, that's negative 2 times negative 1 plus 1, looking at the second column. And that would be 2 plus 1, or 3. Next, I'll apply the same operation to the third column, 9 and 3. Negative 2 times 9 plus 3, which would be negative 18, so negative 15. Okay, so that's going to give me a matrix. It is The first row is unchanged in this step. 1, negative 1, 9. And that became 0, 3, negative 15 in my second row. Right. Next, I want a 1 in my second row, second column entry, which in this case is a 3. So I'm going to multiply row 2 by 1 third so that my matrix becomes, my first row will be unchanged, so 1, negative 1, 9. My second row will be 
one third times zero, which is zero. One third times three, which would be one. And one third times negative 15, which is negative five. So that second row becomes zero, one, negative five. Last, I want a one in this, or a zero actually, in this entry, the first row, second column entry. So I'm going to multiply my first row, or my second row, by positive 1, and then add that to row 1. Now, you may notice I could just add them, not multiply by 1. It's the same thing, but I want to be consistent with my row operations. So this would become a matrix. Let's see, my second row is going to be unchanged, so I'm going to write that in as 1, 0, 1, negative 5. My first row will become 1 times row 2, which looking at the first, the first column, so the 1 times 0 plus 1, which would be 1. Let me say 1 times my second column, 1 times negative 1 plus 1, which will be 0. So that's my second, first row, second column entry. And the last one is 1 times Oh, hold on, that wasn't right. Let me take a step back. Let's see, try that one again. So we said 1 times 0 plus 1, okay? And I'm going to say 1 times 1 plus 0, which will be 1. plus negative 1. What am I doing? All right, 1 plus 1, and then we have minus 1. Okay, I think I had it right the first time. That's 0. Last column I'm going to say is 1 multiplied by negative 5 plus, and I have a 9 in that column above it, so that would be positive 4. So that this matrix becomes 1, 0, 4 is the first row, and 0, 1, negative 5 in the second row. I can read this off as saying that x equals 4, y equals negative 5, which is the solution, the point, 4, negative 5. All right, for our second example, we have this system, and we want to solve the following system using gauss jordan elimination. The first equation is negative x plus 2y equals 4, and the second equation is negative 6x plus 2y equals negative 6. I'm going to write that as an augmented matrix with a first row of negative 1, 2, 4, and a second row of negative 6, 2, negative 6. As always, we want to get this matrix, this augmented matrix, into reduced row echelon form. We'll begin with a 1. We want a 1 in this entry, the row 1, column 1 entry. However, that entry is a negative 1, so we're going to have to multiply that whole row by negative 1. So negative 1 times row 1. So we have a matrix. It's going to be, well, we'll say negative 1, negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1, negative 1 times 2, which is negative 2, and negative 1 times 4, which is negative 4. So that first row is 1, negative 2, negative 4. Second row is unchanged, that'll be 6, 2, neg or negative 6, 2, negative 6. Now, next thing I want to do is get a 0 in the second row first column entry, but that's a negative 6. So I'm going to take row 1, since that's a 1, multiply it by positive 6. Notice I'm always in the opposite actually here, plus row 2. So the steps I'm going to do there, I'm going to have 6 times, my row 1 is 1, so 6 times 1 plus negative 6, or just minus 6, which is 0. For the next column, I'm going to take 6 multiplied by negative 2, and then we will add 2. Should I point to these? So we have 6 times 1 plus or minus 6. We have 6 times negative 2 plus 2. And the last one will be 
well, actually that value is negative 12, so that'd be negative 10. Last column will be 6 multiplied by negative 4 minus 6, which would be negative 30. So that that matrix becomes, my first row is unchanged, 1, negative 2, negative 4, 0, negative 10, negative 30. Next, I want a 1 in my second row, second column entry, but that entry is a negative 10, so what I'm going to do is multiply row 2 by fraction, negative 1 tenth. Right, so that would make my new matrix 1, negative 2, negative 4, and 0. It's negative 1 tenth times 0 be 0. We'll do negative 1 tenth times 0 is 0. Negative 1 tenth times negative 10 would be 1. And negative 1 tenth times negative 30 should be 3. So our second row becomes 0, 1, 3. Now, I want to get a 0 in the first row second column entry. Going for a reduced row echelon form. So I'm going to take 2 multiplied by row 2 plus row 1 to eliminate that negative 2 value, make it a 0. So I will take 2 times my second row is 0, 1, 3. So 2 times 0 plus 1, the value in the first row, which would be 1. 2 times 1 plus negative 2, or minus 2, that would be the value in the first row, and that would be 0. And then I will take 2 multiplied by the row 2 values, that would be multiplied by 3, and then minus 4. That would be 6 minus 4, or 2. So that this matrix becomes an augmented matrix. 1, 0, 2 is my first row, and 0, 1, 3 is my second row. I can read this off as x equals 2, y equals 3, which is the ordered pair 2, 3.